I'm here with Rob Nichols, who fights next week in Calgary for a Canadian title. Rob, what can you tell me about your upcoming fight? Uh, I'm going to be fighting against Frank White. He's the current uh, Cruiserweight title holder. Uh, he's been a title holder several times in his career. He's got like 20-some matches. That, uh, he's got a lot more experience than me. I've got 10 fights. And uh, you know, I've been excited wanting to have an opportunity like this for quite some time. Uh, I've been in the game since 2008. Uh, you know, Frank, he's a veteran, he's a crafty guy, but uh, he's coming up 44, 45, and uh, he's going to be slowing down to some point. I'm the naturally uh, heavier guy, stronger guy at my age right now. I'm pretty good, pretty much my prime. Uh, and I haven't taken, say, the wear and tear and the volume that he has. So I'm looking to this fight to uh, uh, really challenge him on like having more power, more strength, and a better conditioning, and just being attentive that you know don't let him take advantage of me for you know having that experience and capitalizing on any mistakes I may be making. I'm not the most uh, skilled guy out there, but uh, I, I, I bring in with determination and willpower that uh, I'll make the fight messy if I got it, if that's what it takes to win. What do you see as Frank's biggest threat to you in a fight? He, he's a very crafty guy. He's slick on timing. He's, his bread and butter is definitely going to be the counter right hand. So making sure that the, the, I'm not getting lazy with any of my jabs, giving him opportunity to capitalize on it. And then any of the exchanges, making sure my hands are coming back, staying high. Uh, you know, the big thing is, like for me, making sure that it's a 10-round fight. I'm going to drag him into later rounds and make sure he's got to keep up with a busy work rate, right? So, sure, he's got timing, but when's he going to have an opportunity to do it, right? If he's on the, the receiving end of things, blocking shots and taking shots, you know, can he even use that to his advantage, right? I think I think he'll, he'll be strong at the beginning, but as the fight wears on, he'll fail because his last fight, five rounds in Finland last year when he last fought, was in June, I believe, he got stopped in the fifth round with the corner thrown in the towel. And then he fought once before that when he attained his title for a 12-round decision against a guy I fought once before, Sandy Pembroke. And it was a decision where, you know, if it's going to go his way, he just score a point and rack up the, the judges in his favor, right? I'm not leaving it in the judges' hands, never. And he's been known to kind of lull his opponents to sleep in the ring and then catch him with an overhand right. What do you got to do to avoid that? Uh, I think the big thing is making sure that when I'm walking into him, I'm not just, you know... Uh, walking straight in without giving anything for a jab, feeling range, and then making sure I can work off some combinations. Uh, being attentive with him is definitely something you have to do. And when opportunity presents itself, like you said, we're gonna you know, change levels, change high, change low, and make sure everything comes back to you know, give that good structure, you got good balance and defense. And he's just kind of stand-up guy, high guard, he's gonna be right in front of you, Try and move around a little bit, right? Kind of keep a pace that he's not going to get comfortable with over the, the long term of the fight. Uh, so, you know, he, he, he's notorious for, like I said, that, that countering and that good timing. He, he's got a lot of time and experience in it. But um, ultimately, age will catch up. Uh, my size and my strength and the power I bring to it will definitely play a part. And, uh, you know, the, the, the game factor is that uh, I got to influence my will. I don't think he's going to face anyone as, as big as me. Say everything goes your way and you win the title. It'll be a dream come true for you. What would you want to do next after that? Well, I, I like the idea of bringing the, the belt back to the western provinces here. So, like, Calgary is where it's going to be hosted. Uh, I'm on Alberta Boy, and, you know, all the big fights are typically out in the east. Like, say, with Montreal, which is Las Vegas of Canada. And like places like Toronto, which has been developing now recently with guys like uh, uh, Dylan Carmen, and they just had that big fight against Razor Ruddick, right? Uh, I think if we can get more of a presence in boxing in the West, uh, that would definitely help the sports. That uh, you know maybe it could be a new hub for activity going on here for Western provinces, and then any up and coming fighters could have another venue that just isn't so like far away. If we can start promoting boxing, getting stuff back on the, uh, the line of sight for people to hear more about and pay more attention to, uh, these guys are doing a great job at promoting the fights. Like, you know, in two fights, they're going to have a title shot. And if we win this uh, fight, what does that bring them to the next one? I look forward to see because these guys are, you know, former coaches and former boxers themselves that are in this, this promotional group. And they really want to expand and grow, and they're hungry for that. And they're doing it very smart and very diligent. 
And I think there's a lot of opportunity, a lot of potential for these guys, and I look forward to being part of it. And after this fight, are there any names on your mind that you'd like to face after? There's going to be a big bullseye on my back once you get the belt, right? And I'm, I'm expecting that because, you know, anyone can win a belt, but it's the guys that can defend a belt. And I'm not, I'm not a big fan of, like, oh, picking my fights to, like, only picking ones I can win or what's going to pay the most. If I see a challenge that I think, you know, I can attain, I can do, uh, I'm going to take it. And, like, a winning record, I don't have the best winning record as far as, like, being unbeaten. But like you know, I, I, my third, my first loss, I popped an eardrum. I fought four rounds with a popped eardrum. My uh, fight that was in Calgary earlier this year, I had a separated shoulder, and I fought through that and I lost on that. But didn't quit. You know, um, uh, there's not a lot of quit in me. And, and to take fights that you know that are safe bets only, uh, I like the you know, the style of the boxing what it was in the '80s when guys wanted to be the best and they wanted to fight anyone that was out there that was willing to challenge and they had you know that uh, that swagger that said you know they took on anyone and everyone and it was something to attain and something to, to live up to and uh, money isn't everything it helps but uh, ultimately I fight this sport for not just myself anymore I look at say my kids and being an influence for them you know and seeing what they can live and learn from you know what I'm doing so Maybe that's the next step for me now as being a father and maybe for other kids who want to do it, show them what it used to be. Thank you very much, Rob. Good luck in your upcoming fight.